Nor was talking about how the emotions were somewhat mixed right now, leaving a place that he loved in Cleveland. From your point of view, having been in Cleveland for as long as you were, uh, what were the emotions when you were informed of the trade? And what have these last few days been like when it sunk in that uh, you won't be in Cleveland anymore and you're now a New York Met? You know, uh, first, uh, thank you everyone for, for everything in this today. Uh, emotional, it was kind of a little bit because I spent, I spent 12, 13 years over there. But uh, as soon as uh, I hear that I got a trade to New York Max, um, came to my mind a lot of things. Uh, I was happy too. And uh, my reaction was really, really nice. You know, at the same time, you know, I spent a lot of time in Cleveland, but this is part of the baseball. And now uh, with uh, New York Max and uh, myself, my family, my friend, they're, they're really happy for it. And even my friend and my teammate Lindor too, because from day one to now, he even sent me a text how excited he, he is to, to, to play with the Max and uh, I gotta enjoy him too. Uh, both I'm really excited for. With everything the Mets have, have already done this offseason now to add yourself and, and Francisco to the mix, when you look at this group, what excites you the most and, and what do you think the potential is for this team this season? You know, the potential is uh, making to the playoff into the World Series too. Uh, they have a really good team. We have a, a, a really good team. Adding uh, myself indoors is, is going to be really, really good, really nice. Um, uh, we have really good players, uh, starting pitcher, relievers. I think we're going to be fine. So that's the whole point, just making to the playoff in the World Series too. We got a great team. Next question is from Tony DeComo from MLB.com. Hi, Carlos. Welcome. Um, you've played, you've pitched against James McCann for many years. Now you're going to be throwing to him. What do you know about him? Uh, have you spoken to him? Um, and just what is that relationship? Do you have any with him already? You know, um, many years I played against him. I pitched him. Uh, he's a really good man. Um, I have the chance to talk to him. Um, between the games and uh, when I, uh, soon I got a trade, so the first text that I received from him, uh, it was him, welcoming to the Max, and uh, he was so really happy. Now he's gonna be my catcher, so we need a lot to talk, and um, I think he's, we're gonna be fine. He's a really good catcher. He made the All Star, and um, he's so excited. He's so excited to 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 wait so we can sit down and, and talk about it. Thank you. Next question is from Justin Toscano from the Bergen Record. Hey, Carlos. Uh, welcome. Whether it be DeGrom, Stroman, Syndergaard, or just the rotation as a whole, what did you know about Mets pitching, you know, from afar throughout the years last year, be it the past few years? You know what? They're really good. They're really good. But even now, uh, uh, I was with the Cleveland, but uh, I've been watching them from when they went to the World Series and the playoff and everything a long time ago, too. Right now, uh, the rotation is really, really good, strong. Uh, with the grown in there, Stroma, Syndergaard, all those guys in there. Um, I'm really happy for to enjoy that rotation. It's, it's getting me excited. I can't wait to start a spring training and meet everyone in there. And uh, whether it be in the clubhouse or on the mound, what do you think is the best asset that you bring to that rotation? You know what? Uh, the same way that I've been doing uh, all those years. You know, every five days, just go over there, just give him my, my best every five days, just win some game, help the team. The day that I don't pitch, I, I just going to share him for my teammates, for, for, for everyone in there. And that's what I like to. That's what I like to do. And then uh, it's something to give me, get going and uh, my to my teammates to show their support. So I'm just going to be there for, for, for them at uh, the same time when I pitch. So they're going to be there for me too. Next question is from Bruce Beck from NBC. Carlos, welcome. Uh, what kind of competitor, what kind of guy are, are the Mets and their fans getting? You know what? They, they, they get a, a really good guy, um, you know, a really good pitcher. And uh, at the same time, I just get in there and compete, you know, 
compete. Like I said before, just getting the team uh, every five day opportunity to win some game. And that's that's what, what I need to do. And that's what is my goal to. I just go in there and give it the team opportunity. You were a Roberto Clemente uh, Award recipient for your philanthropic e effort in uh, 2019. So what does giving back to the community mean to you? It's really important. Uh, for me and my wife and my family, it's really important to give back to the community uh, the same way we did in, in Cleveland. I would love to do it in New York, and that's our goal, too. Just getting, I can't wait to get uh, there with my family, start start getting back to the community. I think it's something uh, really important. Uh, for us, it's really important because we know there's a lot of people out there that need uh, help. And it's something that I love to do for a long time ago, that everything's coming from from my daughter when she was like four years old, something, she told me something really, really beautiful. And that's the point we start to doing everything. And thanks to my wife, she been doing everything too, uh, from day one to now. Even um, when the season start, uh, she's the one to do everything, just getting back to the community. So we, when I have some off day, so I enjoy, I enjoy her to, to do everything. And I can't wait to, to go to New York and start doing a good relationship with the community. Next question is from Natalie Alonso from MLB.com. Saludos, Carlos. Eh, bienvenidos. Eh, hablaste hace un momento sobre los sentimientos encontrados después de tantos años en Cleveland. Si me puedes contar eh, cómo fue esa experiencia, te tomó por sorpresa el cambio o... o, o tenías la, la, la idea de que podía pasar, ¿cómo fue todo eso? Yo creo que fue algo, um, no, no fue de sorpresa, porque ya se escuchaban los, los rumores este, de hace mes y medio o casi cuatro semanas que podía estar un simple, eh, imposible cambio, y eso fue lo que sucedió la semana pasada. Y bueno, esto, como lo dije anteriormente, es parte de, de béisbol, lo acepto, y ahora estoy muy contento de compartir con otros amigos, con otros teammates y, y, y esperar. Solamente quiero que el sprint training comience para poder compartir un poco más con ellos. Gracias. Carlos, could you translate that into your answer into English, please? Yeah, you know what? Um, I just try and, you know, get on with my teammates. That's, that's what I respond and just getting with my teammates. Um, I didn't uh, surprise about the trade because I hear that for, I don't know, four or five weeks, I maybe get a trade, but I don't know what team uh, to find out. We find out last week it was in New York Max. And um, at the same time, we are really happy for to get a uh, report and spring training and start getting. Great, thank you. The next question is from Tim Britton from The Athletic. Hey, Carlos, welcome to New York. Uh, you know Francisco Lindor uh, better than any of us. What, what does he bring to a team that maybe we can't see from the outside? You know what? Happiness. That's, he, he loves to play baseball on, off the field. He's always happy. And uh, I think the more important, he's a hard worker. So he likes to win, and that's what he's going to bring. Uh, at the same time, this is our baseball. I just want to enjoy it every moment every day, every minute. And that's, that's what he brings. He's a really good guy. I played with him almost five years. I never see him mad. I never see him on, on set, anything. Always happy. And that's what we need. And that's a, uh, really important for us too. What, what was it like when he first came up with Cleveland? When you, when you first saw him in a major league game, what, what were your impressions of him? Impressive. The only thing that I say, uh, you, you're going to be a superstar. And that's what he, he is always, always, even to, to now I say, hey, you are a superstar. And, and uh, thank you for giving me opportunity, you know, the team with the Cleveland back then uh, to play with you, they bring you up here. And um, he told me every time, every time when you pitch it, I just gonna do everything for you. And to, to see how he react to everything and he play baseball, it's really nice for us too. Next is Mike Puma from the New York Post. Carl, Carlos, welcome to New York. Wondering uh, if you could just take me a little bit through when, when you found out a few years ago about the uh, leukemia diagnosis, kind of 
what that was like for you and some of the people who helped you get through it. You know what? Thank you for that question. Um, I was going to bring up uh, the first time that I find out that I had leukemia. Uh, I just think about for 10 seconds, uh, the, the worst thing. But after that, I just always have my, my wife on my side and that she told me, you're going to be fine. From day one to even now this morning, you fine. You don't have anything. And that's what I need to hear. And right now I feel I don't have anything. And this is something really important, really important to me. Um, when I find out that it, it's getting me getting close to more people, to more kids, to more family, to more teenagers, they have this disease too. Um, from when I found out that I just went to the hospital, just given to the simple of just being strong. But uh, I never feel, I never feel, I never feel down. I always. I always think about it a different way. Uh, I have kids, I have wife, I have my parents, friends. I don't want them to see me sad. I always be strong. And that's what I've been feeling right now. I'm feeling really strong about that. And who, who would the Indians did you find was uh, the most supportive of you through the whole thing? My, my whole team. The, my whole team was me, with me. Um, the front office, the staff, my teammates, everyone. I never, I never feel alone. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Ron Blum from the Associated Press. Ron, we'll come back to you. Um, Veronica Contreras from Telemundo, you're next. Hola, Carlos. Bienvenido a Nueva York. Gracias. Háblame, ¿cuál, dos cosas. ¿Cuál tú crees que será el reto más grande para ti eh, con este nuevo equipo? Y también un mensaje que le quieras enviar a todos los aficionados que han estado esperando finalmente tener, tener a un equipo ganador. ¿Sabe? El reto yo creo que es lo que dije anteriormente, de llegar con la misma gana de que yo este, estaba jugando en Cleveland. Cada vez que yo salía a pichar siempre lo, lo hacía, trataba de hacer lo mejor. Y eso es lo que yo espero ahora mismo también, este, de llegar cada cinco días de pichar. Y yo creo que eso es lo más importante, darle la oportunidad al equipo de ganar. Para eso uh, me cambiaron, Esto, ese es mi trabajo y eso es lo que quiero hacer. Y con la fanaticada, desde el primer momento de que me cambiaron, siempre estuvieron atentos. Uh, dándome la bienvenida, de verdad que está muy contento y toda mi familia nos sentimos así por uh, la gran bienvenida que nos ha dado igualmente el equipo, muchos peloteros también me han llamado, me, me, me han enviado mensajes, de verdad que estamos muy contentos por eso. Felicidades, bienvenido. Carlos, could you be kind enough to uh, translate your answer in English? <laughs> I just, I just said. Um, he said thank you to the fans from day one. So they welcome me to the team. They can't wait to to start the uh, the season. You know, get them uh, perform, uh, start pitching. Uh, we are really happy for for everything they they bring to us. My family is really happy for. And the another one was uh, as soon as I get back to to New York, start pitching and perform for them. I think I I can't wait to to do that. Uh, that's what I love and that's what I've been doing for a long time. Great. Howie Rose from Mets Radio, you're next. Hi, Carlos. Welcome to the Mets. Um, how did going through your illness a couple of years ago affect and maybe even increase your appreciation and love, not only for baseball, but the entire baseball community? You know what, from last year, or oh, 2019, when we find out the, the leukemia, I never stopped. I said to my wife, I don't want to stop. I just want to continue help in the community because that's the way that I am. And that's what it, uh, the way I love to do my stuff. And, you know, I think they're really important to get me going. Um, just go out there and continue help, coming back to the stadium, do my work, 
go home for an hour, come back to the community and start doing everything. So it's something that my wife never, you know, never stopped me to do. And, and I, she's trying to keep me busy. And that's what we did. Do you have a deeper appreciation of the game now than you did before? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think it's something really important. And um, from, from that day to now, uh, I've been seeing a lot of love from a lot of uh, teammates, community, another uh, teens, everyone. And um, the creation from this, you know, this beautiful baseball is really nice. When I get back to what I, what I got back to in 2019, and I'm coming back from, from, from the leukemia too. Ron Blum, I believe you're uh, back up and at him here. Let's here. try again. Ah, hey, Carlos. Uh, congratulations on the trade. Thank Has you. your view of the Mets changed at all with Cone buying the team from the Wilpons? Do you view it more as a powerhouse? You know what I think? Yeah, but uh, at the same time, He's, he's Steve is really happy too. At the same time, he's from Queen, and uh, now he's on on the team. So he got really good players. So the same way he's uh, he's really happy. I'm I'm really happy too. And um, like I said before, we have a great team, and uh, we're gonna make it to the playoff, even to the World Series too. And that's that's what my feeling is right now. And uh, just to see uh, my teammates, we're gonna do it. We want to make it. Has he spoken to you? And if so, what did he say to you? Yes, he, yeah, I spoke to him like two days ago. He welcomed me into the team. He was so excited. He can't he can wait to meet me. I can't wait to, to meet him too. Um, the way he talked, the way he said everything, is, he looked like a really nice guy. Congratulations. Thank you. The next question is from Tina Servacio from Fox 5. Hi, Carlos. Welcome to Queens in New York. Um, you talked earlier about looking forward to giving back to the community when you get here. What are you really looking forward to most about just playing in New York with the huge fan base, but also some of the challenges you might expect too? You know what? Um, I played in New York before when I was with the, with the uh, Indians. Just going to New York is really nice place there. It's more energy. Now, that I got traded to the max is going to be even better. I know the fans, everyone out there is really happy for, then I can't wait to start. <clears throat> Next question is from Kevin Mahar from News 12. Hey, Carlos, uh, beating leukemia and cancer is certainly an inspiration. What is your message to people Everyone's going through something, right? In the last nine months about your battle that you'd like people to say, hey, this is the mindset you need to have. You know what, what I did? Uh, always have faith. I think that's, that's the more important, faith. So when you have that, nothing really bad come through to your mind. And, and that's what I did. That's what I did. I got all my faith. Every time, just keeping strong because it's not it's not that easy, you know. Uh, people who people have leukemia, cancer, it's not it's, it's not that easy. But you know what? Uh, I always say my wife, my wife, but uh, she's the one to to get me through everything. So uh, even my family to get me to everything. Just keep your face strong and that's what it did. I think that's more important. Every time when I talk to, when I go to the hospital and trying to talk to some, some, some family, teenager, kids, that I always say that, just be strong, be strong. No, never let you, uh, you, yourself down. I think um, that's the more important for me, uh, the message for everyone. <clears throat> Next question is from Wayne Randazzo from Mets Radio. Hey, Carlos, welcome to the Mets. Uh, you know, just with having to overcome what you did in 2019 and then having to play through a pandemic last year and really, you know, into this year too, you know, how much does that weigh on your mind to, and any extra risk that you might be taking on playing after what you went through? You know what? Thank you for that question. It's really, really, really important. Um, I think it was really nice 
I know um, the team take care, take care of myself. Uh, they said, just be careful. They, all, they almost sent me home too, but I said, no, I just want to play. I just want to be with my teammates. So even uh, when I find out leukemia, uh, I never stop. I never stop playing baseball. I just want to continue to play baseball. Last year with the pandemic, I just want to continue to play baseball. That's what I love to do. And um, what I miss the most, it was when I, when I rest for three months, what I miss the most is, you know, getting to my teammates, just getting pitched every five day. But you no, know, even that, you no, know, even the cancer or the pandemic never stopped me. So I just take care of myself, but at the same time, I continue to perform and pitch too. Next question is from Laura Albanese from Newsday. Hi, Carlos. Um, you had mentioned a few times already today, winning World Series, winning World Series. Obviously, Cleveland had a few playoff chances and made that deep run in 2016. You know, how much did that still stick in your brain? And, and what did you learn from that experience? You know what? I think I didn't get to pitch because on September I got land dry, so they broke my hand. But uh, uh, I saw everything from from game one to the playoff to the last game on the World Series seven game. It was really fun. And every baseball player, the one... They won a championship. They won a ring. And uh, we were so close. And that's what I bring now to the uh, New York Max. So uh, they have really good players. Now we myself, Lindor, uh, the team getting uh, uh, stronger. And uh, that's what my feeling, just making to to the playoff in the World Series. Thank you. Next is Raul Ramos from Conas Baseball, Minas. Uh, hi, Cookie. Raul Ramos. Um, so you are in a position that you have become uh, one of the uh, one of the best, best Venezuelan players in, in the major leagues. Before you, there was Elio Chacón, there was Álvaro Espinosa, Johan Santana, Bobby Abreu, that all of you guys were uh, this, the, the blue and orange of the Mets. So now you're in a position that you are uh, a star with the Mets. What message do you want to give to your people in up back home and to the Hispanic kids that are watching you? If you want to do it in Spanish, Alan Suriel can translate after that. All right. I think my response, like all those names you mentioned, is really nice to me. I know them, everyone. Now here myself, just wearing this, uh, is getting me really happy for. And um, I said before, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy right now. Um, I wish the spring training start next week, uh, you know, to, to meet everyone and start wearing this uh, jersey. It's something really important for me. You know, just wearing this jersey right now is really, really, really important for me. And um, I think the more important, just perform for the New York Max, I think it's more important. Thank you. We have time for a couple more. Um, next, Rich Catino from ESPN Radio. Hey, Carlos, welcome to New York. Um, quick question for you. Um, you know, a trade, there's always a period of transition when you come to a new team. How much is it going to help you that you're coming over here with a teammate that you've been through so much with as an Indian, including pennant race baseball and off and, and, and postseason baseball? You know, just coming with uh, Francisco Lindor is really nice. Uh, pretty much everyone know him. Uh, the way he play, the way he to do everything, he never he never stop, he never stop playing. Now, coming uh, from the same team to another team is really nice. He sent me a text, hey, we got we got a trade to the same team. I'm really happy for. Um, uh, even this morning, uh, he sent me a text. Is he just gonna watch for me on this press conference? So he's really happy to be with me. We spend a lot of time together. We talk a lot. He helped me a lot. And thanks, guys. So I can I can still have the opportunity to play with him and the rest of the team. Next question is from Jerry Beach from Forbes. Hey, Carlos. Uh, you really um, established yourself as a starter after that 
uh, trip to the bullpen with the Indians in 2014. I wondered what you learned, uh, you know, how that experience helped you and how kind of taking a, a long path to becoming a rotation mainstay has helped you kind of overcome some of the, uh, you know, challenges that might present itself to a starting pitcher during the course of a year. You know what? Um, as soon when I got sent back, uh, sent to the bullpen, uh, it was completely different for me because I always uh, I was in the uh, rotation. But that year, there was one of those years they have some up and downs. There was really bad. I just trying to learn some uh, different pitchers. Um, pitching on the game, there was really bad. But uh, you know what? Thanks to um, the organization and Tito Francona, Kevin Cash, to make that decision to send me to the bullpen, I learned a lot. On the bullpen, it's completely different because in the bullpen, you can you can pitch one inning, you can pitch two out, one out, or one pitch, or something like that, you're getting ground ball. So I learned so much how important it is, uh, you know, to pitch out of the bullpen. So uh, I was there for maybe four or five weeks, and then they sent me back to the uh, rotation. That was really nice. And uh, from that point in August, when they sent me to the rotation, I take off. And... Uh, it was really nice. And the follow year, it was a pretty good year. And the next two follow year, there was the one that I got 18 wins, 17 wins, and everything was learned on the bullpen, just to bring into that rotation. So I think it was a really good experience to send me to the bullpen and bring me back. So I learned, I learned a lot. The last question today will come from Natalie Alonzo from MLB.com. Natalie? Nope. I guess we'll have one more we'll have time for one more from Mark Roseman from Sports Talk New York. Hey, Carlos, welcome to New York. Um, a pitcher's success a lot of times has to do with where he slots out in the rotation. And you're part of that great Cleveland Indians rotation with Kluber, Bauer, and Clevenger. How would you compare that rotation to this rotation? And the second part is two of those guys are right now on the open market as free agents. How much would you like to see one of those two guys also slot into this rotation? You know what? Um, I'm really happy to see one of those guys in, in this rotation. Like I said before, I have, I have I spent a lot of time with uh, Clevenger, Bauer, Kluwer, a lot of those uh, teammates. Um, it's kind of nice to see one of those guys uh, on the Mexican uniform too. And uh, just just to uh, hear that, what you say is giving me a lot of chills. But uh, you know what? It's really happy to see one of those uh, those two guys uh, on the Mexican uniform. And uh, you guys know then uh, they perform pretty good. So uh, Bawa won the Sion last year. Kluwe got two. They are really good pitchers. Just to see them back to, so we can play together is really nice. Carlos, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who joined us and everyone please stay safe. Thank you.